The styling hack videos are back again. And as a commercial food and drink photographer, I want to break these myths. I want to tell you the truth about what's going on because they are ludicrous. And I keep having people coming up to me going, do you put motor oil on pancakes? Obviously not. A highly flammable substance and flashlight, not gonna happen. So let's dive into it and let's take a few of these examples. And I'm gonna tell you actually what goes on on set on commercial adverts. Now, first off, let's talk about milk. Milk is used in a lot of things. And we're gonna take cereal for an example. If the advert is for the milk itself, and it's a milk brand, we will use the exact milk used in that shoot. We have to legally, that's how it goes. But, and here's the big but, if we're shooting for a cereal brand, as in this example, we won't necessarily use milk as it is. We will often mix cream and milk together so it pours slower so we can capture the splash or the pour and the movements. Also, milk has a distinct yellow tint to it, and this makes it look very white. But we certainly aren't pouring PVA glue onto cereal because it looks like PVA glue on cereal. Now, another great one I've seen a lot of recently is this cheese pool malarkey, and it's someone drilling a pizza onto a board to do a cheese pool sort of thing. And, and again, kind of a half truth, but here's what actually happens. We will often slice the pizza raw, do a lattice of cheese over the slices, cook it, and then pull it out. Because the problem is with doing a cheese pull, if we were just to cut it after it was cooked and then pull it out, the cheese has been cut. The only reason you get a cheese pull in real life is because somebody's cut the pizza badly, and that's, that's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do is show the stringy cheese how beautiful it is, and to do that, we often cut it, lattice the cheese, and then pull it out. But we only use as much cheese that comes on the pizza because we have to. If it says these pizzas come with 75 grams of cheese, we have to distribute 75 grams of cheese. We might just distribute it in a slightly tactical way to make sure the cheese pool looks appealing. Now, fake ice is a real big one at the moment, especially with drinks photography. And again, this is more of a trends thing than anything else. For many years, people use very expensive fake ice, and we still do sometimes. If you need a drink to be in set for a very long period of time, you will use fake ice because it stops the condensation happening. On film sets where they're doing multiple takes, they'll probably be using fake ice. But really, real ice looks better if you can get good real ice. And also the condensation from real ice looks better. There's a real shift in the industry where we're bringing real ice into glasses and shooting it that way. So we'll quite often have everything set up with a stunt glass. We'll then pull the stunt glass out, pull the real glass in. They'll buy these big blocks of ice, chisel them down into perfect ice cubes, place them in, and then we'll grab the shot quickly. If we miss it and the condensation starts, we'll just pull in another glass. It's not that difficult to do. Very straightforward. Which brings us to ice cream, which is a real worry for the public. They're like, well, it's just mashed potato and stuff. And, and again, this is very similar to the milk and cereal debacle. So it all depends on who we're shooting for. Sometimes you will have an ice lolly fabricated and it has to look exactly like a real one. That does happen. Sometimes you will shoot with fake ice cream if you're shooting for a cone brand or a sauce brand or something which isn't the ice cream. But if we're shooting an actual scoop of ice cream for a scoop of ice cream brand, we're shooting that ice cream. But what we do is to make sure we can get it on set without it melting under the hot lights is we double freeze it. So you get the ice cream in the freezer, you scoop it and you put it into a deep freezer. And that means that when we put it on set, it doesn't melt instantly because the lights are really hot. You've probably got like a second before it becomes a droopy mess. And that just allows us to do that. But of course, we want the product to look like the actual product. So much so, when we've been recently shooting some major fast food brands, not only do they send their own technician down to work with the food stylist, they also send their equipment down. It's very common that we'll have the equipment from the shop, we'll have the, all the ingredients from the shop. We never use any other brand's products in a photo shoot for their brand. So we'll have all of their products. Then the stylist will make it and the technician will go, yes, that is exactly the right ratios. That's how it should be. Don't do too much of that because that's not realistic. Do a bit more of this. And, and of course, this has changed since the 90s. In the 90s, it was plastic, fantastic, everything all over the place. But there's been a real shift in this because the consumer doesn't want to be lied to. And also the photographer doesn't want to lie to the consumer. There's no pride in going, I made this brilliant picture, go and buy one of these over there. And it looks nothing like it. Which brings us through to motor oil on pancakes. And this is the one which really triggered me because... 
motor oil doesn't look as syrupy as syrup does. And motor oil doesn't pour as syrupy as syrup does. There is no reason why you'd want to pour motor oil onto pancakes when you could just pour syrup. It makes no sense. Syrup does a great job of being syrup. It's not too runny, it's not too thick. Honey's a bit of a, a tricky customer. But golden syrup, or any kind of, as you do maple syrup, maple syrup pours like maple syrup, golden syrup pours like golden syrup. They do exactly what they say on the tin. There's no need to bring motor oil into the equation. And having a highly flammable substance on set where there's high capacity, like flashes going off all the time, is probably not the wisest thing to be doing. So one, it's incredibly dangerous both to the set and the shot, but also to people's lives on set. But also it's completely pointless. Now I'm going to finish with this. If you're not shooting for a food brand and you want to shoot some food just for fun or for another means, maybe it's say a book cover, which has nothing to do with food, then by all means do whatever you want to get the shot to look how you want it to look. It doesn't matter. But in the advertising world, there are laws in place for good reason that we have to follow. And these styling hacks are just complete baloney. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.